Okay, so now we are looking at cross plant stock transfers. So this time we are moving from a storage location to storage location, but it could be plant to plant within the same company code or plant to plant in different company codes. Okay, so once again, like before, it can be only from unrestricted use stock. Okay, and it, we are considering this one now. So company code A, it's moving from plant to plant. And depending on whether you do one step or two step, right, so here you could be doing a one step or a two step. Depending on that, it will create either one material document or two material documents, right, one material document if it's one step. But that document will have two items, but otherwise it could be two material documents. And uh, if valuation changes, there will be an accounting document, right? It's possible the valuation may change, it's possible the valuation may not change, depending on what the company is doing. And then the valuation is based on the value at the issuing plant, right? It has to be either this or this. Conventionally, SAP just says valuation is based on the value at the issuing plant. Right. And of course, this affects MRP, right? Because MRP goes by plant, so it can affect MRP, right? When you do company code to company code, of course, this is you know movement between two different company codes, and therefore there will be two material documents and two accounting documents. Okay, and the offsetting entry. See, after all, it's going from stock is moving from one company code to another company code, right? So we need to adjust the accounts properly. So what will happen is uh, they use uh, what is called as a company code clearing account to make the offsetting entries. Okay. So the clearing account is what will balance between the company codes. Okay. And uh, yeah. in this case, yeah, this is now moving from one company code to another company code, right? No, there are two different company codes involved, right? So each company code has to track the material properly. So you would require two. Uh, is it like since it's in client, so you create one document which can be seen on both ends? Can be done, I suppose, but. Uh, yeah, any any thoughts there on this on this one? I mean, why he's, what, he's got a point. Why two material documents? And two why two two accounting is clear? Yeah, two, two, two company codes. Yeah. yeah. So you have you have you have two company codes. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I mean the material document, right? Since company codes are under client level, so uh -huh. uh, if you create one material document, is it like can it be visible on both the company codes for same? Can this be done with just one material document? Okay, one material document. Yes, if the material document will only be related to plan. Okay, so so it's possible. Uh, it's possible, but it depends on your authorization. If you are authorized to uh, find out, okay, to display the material document. You'll be fine. You can you can see that. So authorization also gets out the company code. Like each company code can go into the material document section and then just can look into the other side of that. Yes. And usually if you type a material document, you don't have to worry about company code. Mm -hmm. You only need to say plan. because yeah, plan. Material document is related to plan, mm -hmm. not related to company code. Accounting document will be related to company uh, uh will be related to company code. Yeah, so uh, there are no difference if you want to view the material document for these two plans, plan one and uh, two, or if you want to view the material document for plan one or plan three, no difference because you know when we talk about material document, will it be independent of company for the type of plan. Okay, so that's a possibility that uh, it could be done with just one material document. Okay, we'll. Keep it as pending and verify it or whatever. Check it out. Okay. Uh, so here, again, cross plant, we have one step, two step procedure. And it's 
everything else is just the same as, as before. There's no big difference. So we use a different movement type. Okay, uh, stock transport order. This is another type of stock movement. Remember, we've discussed it a couple of times now. Stock transport order is what? It's a, it's a pseudo purchase order. It's an internal purchase order, right? So if you want to move stock from one storage location to another storage location, then you could just, or one plant to another plant really, then you could use a stock transport order. It's as if one plant is buying the stock from another plant. Okay, I just say it's as if buying. Oh, by the way, there's something in the previous slide that I need to point out here. Right. So this movement could also be a stock transport order because these are plant to plant movements. Right. So this could be a stock transport order, but it says stock transport order with or without delivery. Right. When they use the word delivery here, they're talking specifically about the creation of an outbound delivery in the sales and distribution module. Okay. So the word delivery is, is special. They're using the term uh, like in sales and distribution. So you might have a stock transport order with delivery. In other words, in response to the stock transport order, the plant that receives the order will use sales and distribution modules delivery capabilities, right? In other words, it will do an outbound delivery and then move the goods. That's one possibility. Another possibility is that this is done without involving sales and distribution. Both of those options are possible. Okay, so you have to just uh, remember that. Because after all, it's like a purchase order, right? One plant placed a purchase order on another plant. That plant received pretty much a sales order. Right, from that plant's point of view, it could be like a sales order. So they can use the sales and distribution mechanism to ship it, which is the outbound delivery mechanism. Okay, but it's possible that they just you know, do a stock, uh, you know, goods issue and then deliver it without creating an outbound delivery. Okay, so those are both options that are possible here. Okay, so that's a stock transport order. And uh, in stock transport order, that's what we are doing here. We've got uh, uh, an issuing plant, or sorry, a receiving plant, right? The receiving plant is the one that initiates the stock transport order. So the order went from here to here. So that plant initiated the stock transport order like it's a, a, a purchase order, right? So this plant in response sent the material, it was stock in transit, and then it was received like it was received from a vendor. It was received in the other storage location, okay? So stock transport order, just remember that it's like an internal purchase order. Now there are several advantages to using stock transport order over just regular goods uh, goods movements, stock, regular stock transfer, right? We discussed some of these advantages, I think right on day one, we discussed it. Um, let's take a look at some other things. Okay, for example, this can be integrated with MRP. Remember in MRP, it creates procurement proposals, right? So MRP can create a planned order which can be converted into a purchase requisition, right? Or, of course, the planned order can be converted into a production order. Right now, we're not interested in that part. Now, this purchase requisition earlier, we said, would be converted into a purchase order, right? But now, the purchase requisition can actually be converted into a stock transport order because that's like a purchase order, right? So that's another aspect of that MRP conversion process. We did not talk about this when we talked about MRP, right? So in MRP, we simply said uh, the planned order can be converted to a purchase order, purchase requisition, or MRP can directly spew out a purchase requisition, okay? That purchase requisition, we said, can be converted into a purchase order and sent off to a vendor. Instead, what we are now saying is that purchase requisition can be converted into a stock transport order and simply sent to another plant from where we will get the material. Okay, so you've got that additional option with stock transport order, which you won't have with regular stock transfer. Okay, so the MRP integration is a lot cleaner with the stock transport order. Uh, the receipts can be planned. Okay, what we're saying here is that uh, 
you know when you create a stock transport order inside the system there is information that says you know you're going to get some material okay so the receipts can be more planned and orderly than if it is just a regular stock transfer and of course this was the point that was also made in the first uh, of, you know when we first talked about it which is this delivery might be might have some costs associated with it okay so if it's just a regular stock transfer you, we won't have a way to track those costs right those costs will just go into the regular uh, you know the warehousing costs that's all and then it will get distributed but we may want to track the cost specifically and allocate it to a specific object right if you want to do that then it's a good idea to use stock transport order so that you can then assign the cost of movement to that order itself right so that makes much more uh, much more uh, what would you say appropriate cost accounting in that sense okay you can specify a carrier now with this because you know when you create a purchase order you specify a carrier so you can do that for this uh, and then you have the option of posting the goods receipt to consumption right so when you have purchase order for example in purchase order when you want to buy material for consumption what do you need to do yeah specify the type specify the account assignment object yes. right in the purchase order when you say this item is for consumption then you will indicate the account assignment object for example you say this is a cost center for whom we are ordering this material so it's not ordering to stock it will go directly to that department okay we can do the same thing with this as well you're moving the stock but along with that you can say this is for consumption right so it's much more uh, it, it's simplified otherwise you'll take it and then you'll issue it to that consuming department now you don't have to do that the fact that it is for consumption is directly noted so that's another advantage you can do with this and then of course you have the option of posting the thing to quality inspection or block stock whatever you could do with a purchase order you can do that as well now that you won't be able to do that in uh, in a stock transfer and finally you can monitor the whole process okay so there are lots of advantages to using a stock transport order as opposed to just a stock transfer yeah does a stock transport order allow you to, to move from the other two categories the quality inspection stock and the no no the, the, all of these movements plant to plant can only be from unrestricted stock okay <clears throat> Okay, so this is these are many advantages, and I think it's possible that uh, you know they might like to ask questions from from this in some sense. Okay, so the term stock transport order should be etched in your mind by now. I think I've said it about three hundred times, so it probably is etched. I have one other question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know the book refers to it saying financial accounting documents are only created if the two plans use different by the way. That is here. Yeah. Okay. But that doesn't make sense. Um, if you're moving from one plan to the other, is it assuming um, that the, the that your general ledger accounts are kept up? Our, our summation basically or rolled up accounts from all the different plants and you, you don't bother tracking those inventories within FI on the plant level. Yeah, that's right. It, it's one single plant, right? No. Between I mean, one single company code. Yes. Yeah. So you don't need to track at plant level. You will be tracking stock and other things anyway. I mean, your inventory management system would be tracking all of that. Okay. Right? For the financial accounting, all you need is the value. Okay. Regardless of where. Regardless, yeah. Really. Yeah. So what was the uh, thing about this is the fact that here I said two accounting documents, but that looks like it may not be right yet on this company code. I thought that I was thinking that as con con CEO management. 
Hmm. Yeah. We'll. I'll try to think about it and see what it is. Yeah, that's possible. But here we are looking only at material and accounting documents. Okay, whether two accounting do two material documents are strictly needed or not, we don't know yet. Okay, so stock transport order, we've looked at all the advantages. Okay, now we are moving to warehouse management, right? So we've looked at inventory management. We're jumping to warehouse management, which is related but different. Okay, so inventory management is about quantity, where, what type of stock do you have? Right. That, that's what inventory management is mainly concerned about. Whereas warehouse management is concerned about physical storage and retrieval. So all the logistics involved in physically storing and retrieving, which means they're not concerned with saying this is in this storage location, but exactly where it is in that storage location. Okay. They're also concerned with, uh, you know, efficiency of functioning of the whole warehouse. How do we efficiently pick up material from the warehouse? How do we efficiently put away material into the warehouse and so on? Right. So let's say you're picking, uh, you've got 100 sales orders and you have to pick items for all these 100 sales orders from a massive warehouse. Right. You cannot be going and doing the pickup for every single order. Right. That could be too time consuming and too expensive for you to do. So you might have to batch up all these 100 uh, you know, items for all these 100 sales orders and then make one round and pick up all of them and come back. So that that is efficient. So those are all concerns of warehouse management. Because then you have to know, uh, not just it is in this location, but where exactly is it in this location? Right? In which shelf? In which aisle? On which bin is it sitting? That is warehouse management. Okay? So now you've got two things to do. For example, when there is a goods receipt, you have two pieces that are involved in it. Right? The inventory management has to take care of the goods receipt and then warehouse management has to do its job. Right? So there are two pieces that come into play now because of inventory management and warehouse management together. Both have to perform their piece. So now the question that arises is whose piece goes first? Do we do inventory management first or do we do warehouse management first? Okay. So that's what this is. This figure is trying to explain that aspect. Okay. So in this figure, we see that uh, let's say you consider a goods receipt, right? In goods receipt, once again, uh, if you have an inbound delivery, right? And see, the, the, when, they, when they use the term delivery, they're using it in a very specific sense, in the sense of an SAP delivery document, okay? Internal SAP delivery document, right? So here, what they're considering is that you have a delivery document against which you're receiving the delivery against which you're receiving the goods, right? So for example, it might be a stock transport order from one plant to another plant and the, the, the sending plant has already sent us advance notice of the upcoming delivery, right? So we have a delivery document. If that is the case, if you're doing your receipts against a delivery document, then you do your warehouse operations first. Okay. Do your warehouse operations first, then do the inventory operation. Right? The goods receipt posting and goods issue posting, they are the inventory operations. The other things are warehouse operations. Right? Put away with a transfer order, confirm a transfer order. That's the warehouse piece. Right? So in general, the rule is if you're performing an operation, uh, you know, a stock operation based on a a delivery document, either inbound or outbound, then you do the warehouse operation first and then you do your uh, inventory operations. Otherwise, you do the inventory operation first and then do the warehouse operation. Okay, so that's the logic. So here, we are receiving the goods against an inbound do uh, delivery document. So we do warehouse first. What are we doing in the warehouse? We first create a transfer request, must have been created. Then with the transfer order, we put away the material. And uh, the person who does that will send a confirmation saying the material has been put away. And then we post that. Right? In other words, what we are saying is, you've got 500 pieces of some item that has come in. Transfer order was created to put this away. So somebody came with the truck, picked up those 500 items, took it into the shelf, put it away. 
and then they entered a confirmation saying this is done and then you went and said okay 500 units posted okay so the inbound delivery with purchase order of the best for posting right which one the here second, yeah that you say that as a transfer or no, 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 no. This is just, I, I don't know why they put this box. It's just saying there's an inbound delivery mm -hmm. with some purchase order reference, reference to a purchase order, but it's an inbound delivery, mm -hmm. right? In other words, what you're saying is, uh, just like I said, uh, let's say you sent, I'm giving another example now. Let's say you're closely linked to the supplier, right? Let's say you're, you're very closely linked to the supplier. You placed a purchase order with the supplier. And the supplier sent you advance notice of an upcoming delivery through some electronic means. Okay, so that is what this is. In it's a delivery document, right? So when they use, they should probably use an uppercase V here. It's a it's a delivery object within SAP. So now we know that the delivery is going to come up. We do, we haven't got it yet, but we know it's going to come up. So we plan the warehouse operations in advance. I and think what here it means is like the when you are when a truck with the goods arrive in your uh, warehouse. I think that's what it means. It's like inbound delivery. No, this delivery you mean? Yeah. No. Like whatever you place an order, that order is received in your compound or something. So your. No, but the point is this delivery document. This delivery is not the the event when the truck arrives. This is a document that has been sent to us mm -hmm. to tell us it's going to come at such and such a time. It's a delivery document. Okay, it's an advanced delivery document really. Okay. So then you plan your warehouse operations first. Right, so you plan them. As soon as the dog, as the actual truck arrives, execute that planned warehouse operation. Then do your inventory management, right? On the other hand, suppose you get a delivery without any advance notice. In other words, there is no, this delivery you're receiving these goods not against any delivery, not against a delivery document, right? So you're just sitting there doing your work and suddenly a truck turns up, right? So in this situation, you, you can't do a warehouse operation, right? Because warehouse operations have to be planned. You can't be doing ad hoc warehouse operations. It will become very costly. So in this case, what you do is you pick up the stuff, put it in some temporary, you know, receiving area, receive the goods. So it's gone into stock already. And then, whenever the time comes, warehouse will plan and do its job. Okay. So the key point is, if you had advance notice, your warehouse operations can be planned and you can do them first. If you don't have advance notice, then you do your inventory operations first and then let the warehouse operations happen whenever they can. Okay. So same thing, the analog is on the other side for goods shipments. So for example, here, you've got a sales order, right, and you're shipping with reference to that sales order. So you create an outbound delivery document. We'll see this when we do sales, sales order processing. First step for in, in delivery is you create an outbound delivery document. Right, in SAP they just call it an outbound delivery. Right, but that is what initiates your shipment. So then the warehouse operations can be planned because you've created an outbound delivery. Warehouse will plan its operations and at some point they'll go and pick up the material and give it to us. And then we do the goods issue posting. Right. Whereas here, if there are some other things for which you you're shipping without an outbound delivery document, you're just creating a shipment. Right. Then you would do the uh, inventory first, and then you will do it. Okay. So this slide has some some subtleties that uh, we may not catch. So the uh, the place where you're doing the warehouse operations first is when you have advance notice of the delivery in the form of a delivery document, either inbound or outbound. Okay. Then you can do warehouse. Otherwise, you just do the inventory operations first. Could you say um, the last scenario is, for example, where you might do factory door sales. So somebody shows up and says, I want to buy 10 of this. Possible. Yeah. So it's coming straight out of the inventory, but you didn't have Right. You couldn't plan it. Yeah, that's a good, good, that's a good example. Right, so it was not against a purchase order, no, not against a sales order. Right, so you may have a factory outlet where you're just selling right from there and somebody comes and buys. So that was not planned uh, and that. 
it's a good good way to look at that okay uh, so just showing you the difference between the inventory and warehouse management pieces of that diagram okay so that's really about 